Hi guys, it's gonna be a wet and windy week here aboard Athena, so the projects up on deck are gonna have to go on hold for a little bit. But there's only 89 days until we wanna untie the lines and start the long journey to bring Athena from Europe to the US. So I can't really afford to waste a lot of time. You might recall from last week's video that the head was looking a little bit messy. In fact, it was a strong contender for Hoarder's monthly boat of the year. But look at this. I can now walk into the head. It's certainly not clean in there, but it is nice and tidy. So what needs to happen in here? Well, quite a bit. I need to do a ton of fairing on the bulkheads here to make them nice and smooth. I need to turn this hatch here into a watertight hatch because it's inside of the shower. There's a little bit of assembly required here behind the head as well as the plumbing for the head. There's some fairing and priming and painting required over here by the vanity. I need to build some kind of shower pan so that the water can drain from the shower. There's a little bit of tabbing up here that's delaminated. It still seems very solid, but it's got an annoying sound to it. I'm not going to be able to finish the head this week because I'm waiting for some materials, but the laser cut parts, including the little clampy supporty thingy for the lithium batteries, are supposed to show up this week. And that means I can hopefully build that area in the aft cabin. My fiance Ava has this mug that says, but first coffee. Every time I see that mug, I think, it really should say, but first, sanding. Yep, it's time for some surface prep. With the surfaces nice and keyed, I mixed up some epoxy and thickened that with 407. I'm using 407 because that's what I've got. I'm not a big fan of the stuff. One of the downsides is that it takes a long time to mix it. For this, I'd say I spent more time mixing than I did actually applying fairing compound. For now, all I care about are the flat surfaces. Once those are done, then I'll worry about the outside corners and the fillets. On a few areas of the bulkhead, you'll see a slight wavy texture. That's because I was a little bit too liberal with the epoxy when I was wetting out the peel ply. But it's okay, everything is gonna get fared, so no matter what, it's gonna be a completely smooth surface that's nice and easy to keep clean. This is, after all, a bathroom. It would be nice if it was easy to keep clean. Holy turd, Batman, that is a lot of brown. The great wall of chocolate still needs a little bit more time to cure before I can go ahead and sand it, but that's okay. There is something else we can get started on. Yesterday, the long awaited laser cut parts arrived. Most of them are for the tow rail. We'll get back to those later, but included were also these two plates here. These are for the lithium batteries. The cells are gonna get sandwiched in between the two plates. There's gonna be six threaded rods, three on either side connecting the two plates. That'll serve two purposes. For one, it'll secure the cells and also it'll compress the cells ever so slightly, but that's a topic for another video. Unfortunately, upon checking, it seems I have goofed the bottom of the battery compartment. I need to raise it a little bit to be able to fit everything. And that has turned this project from a few hours into probably most of the day. On the plus side of things, I have not secured the old bottom yet. So that certainly helps. So while leaving room for connections to the battery, it looks like I am at 32 centimeters. There's gonna be a sheet of plexiglass covering the cells. That's what these three holes on each of the flanges are for. So of course I need to add that, but I should still be able to raise the bottom of the battery compartment about two centimeters. After a little bit of fiddling about, I've got a new bottom and that is roughly where these cells are gonna be installed. There is room all the way around the cells for a little bit of air circulation. There's plenty of room over here for the BMS fuses, stuff like that. I ended up making the bottom out of two separate pieces of plywood. Between the two, I'm gonna sandwich these. These were from the scrap pile in the workshop. And these are what I'm gonna be threading the bolts into here because there's not enough room for me to access the bottom from underneath. Here are the two pieces of the bottom. This is the bottom of the bottom. And this is where I'm gonna inlay these little pieces of stainless. And I am gonna have to trim them just a little bit for them to be able to fit. After a trip to the workshop and a bit of persuading with Mr. Angle Grinder plus some sanding, I marked the positions on the plywood and removed the needed material. For the sake of paranoia, I did a second test fit of the cells to make sure everything lined up. After a quick bit of surface prep to make sure I get a good bond, it was on to wetting out the plywood before applying thickened epoxy and smushing the two halves together. I mixed up yet more thickened epoxy for fillets and tabbed the bottom to the rest of the hull. 
While the epoxy in the aft cabin is curing, it looks like the fairing compound here in the head is ready for sanding. Fortunately, there is no blushing, so I can move straight to sanding without doing any kind of cleaning. For that, I've got 80 grit and I've got 40 grit. At this stage, I could use 40 grit, but I think 80 will suffice. These are smaller areas, so I am not going to worry about long boarding or anything like that. My 150 turbo here should do a great job. I'm done sanding and I've also applied a little bit more fairing compound. Once this has cured and I've sanded it, I think we're ready to move on to the next step in the fairing process, which is going to be all those annoying corners. I applied the first coat of primer in the battery compartment. To get away from the fumes, I came here to the workshop to start working on Athena's new tow rail or mini bulwarks. I've been waiting for these for quite a while, but uh, let me get them just lined up a little bit better and I can show you what it's roughly gonna look like. Space is a little bit of a problem here for this demonstration. The boat is 38 feet long so of course these are going to be spaced out a lot further. This is at the bow of the boat, this is midships and that one is at the stern. Between the stainless end caps as I've started calling them there's going to be a decorative piece of wood that is going to act as our tow rail or as our mini bulwark. As you can see there are little holes in each of the end caps. That is for one of these little doohickeys so each end cap gets a little horse hole. The end cap that's at the stern of the boat also has two holes up here. That's where Athena's solar arch is going to get welded into the tow rail. It's all going to be an integrated solution and I think it's going to look super spiffy. Unfortunately between me and spiffiness stands hours and hours of oh glorious polishing to turn this into this. If you look real close you can see that I'm not really going for perfection here, I'm just going for nice and shiny. I forgot to mention that there is a back for these two, so they're not going to be open when you look at it from the inside of the boat. There's going to be this that's going to cover everything up and of course this also needs to be polished. There are some pretty deep marks here from when this was bent into shape. Those I'll have to get out first before I can start polishing. I've got a bunch of these discs. There is a coarse one, a medium one, and a fine one. On the first one I polished, I used one of these flappy discs. This is a 60 grit version to get rid of the deep marks up here because it seems like the coarse disc is not really coarse enough for that. I started working my way through the disc, starting with the top and the bottom. Then I flipped the end cap and started working on the sides. I'm trying to keep the strokes long and consistent. If I stay too long in one little spot, I'll get a little sort of waviness in the mirror finish that I'm trying to avoid. The last two steps involve polishing paste and that just removes the fine scratches and really brings out the shine. I'm happy to report number two turned out better than the first one. It's not perfect, but it's definitely better and getting better at stuff like this is always a lot of fun. By the time I'm done with the last end cap, I'll probably be pretty decent at this. You're not going to be able to see the imperfections that are here unless you get really close. And also, I mean, it's going to get dinged up over the years, I'm sure. So this is plenty fine. These took about 40 minutes each. I've got four more of those, but I've also got all of the backs for the end caps and of course the solar arch. Fortunately, that is a problem for future mess because all of these are going to have stuff welded onto them and it doesn't make sense to start polishing them before that stuff has been welded on there. So this was just a quick taster of misery to come. I will grab these two and bring them down to Athena so we can do a dry fit of them tomorrow so that we can hopefully do a dry fit of the arch a little later in the week. That would be really, really cool. I can't really reuse the old holes, but that's okay. I can seal those up. But uh, something like this is what I'll be shooting for. God dang it. I didn't make it. It started pouring down. So let's save the end caps for later and uh, move on to the battery compartment. As you can see, I've built the top of the battery compartment and I'm done priming the inside. So the next step is to start applying some paint. But uh, let me put this thing on because that stuff reeks. There are a few things as rewarding as slapping on a little bit of paint. It makes a huge difference. The first coat of this paint always looks horrible. After the third coat, it's going to look super spiffy, but this needs to sit for about eight hours. 
I headed up to the workshop and tabbed about 1 million holes in the end caps. There are between 10 and 15 holes that need to be tabbed in each cap for a total of around 70 holes. I shudder at the thought of doing that by hand. Then it was on to start polishing the backs, but I only managed to do about one and a half before calling it quits. Next morning, with the help of the cement boat crew, we loaded the arch onto their trailer and brought it down to the marina. After having secured the feet, we lifted the arch up in place and Martin tagged it in place. The arch looks perfect. It is exactly what I was hoping for. I am super excited to get the last little bits welded on the arch. There are some details that we still need to figure out, but uh, we'll head up to the workshop in a little bit. First, I wanna apply the third and final coat of paint in the battery compartment. With a little bit of luck and a space heater at full blow, this should have cured enough tomorrow that I can go ahead and install the batteries. That would be a very cool way to end this video. Welcome back to the workshop. Here is the first completely finished end cap. I put this little piece of wood here just to show you guys what it's roughly gonna look like when it's mounted on the boat. So that's the outside. And then here is the inside. Don't mind my greasy fingerprints on this, but yeah, if you ask me, this is gonna look like a million bucks. But of course, this level of spiffiness doesn't come without a cost. For the tow rail, it's not so much a monetary cost, it's more the time that's gonna be spent polishing. That is gonna go through the roof. One of the reasons I decided to build the tow rail this way was to save a little bit of money. The alternative to this would be something like a traditional aluminum tow rail. Something like this aluminum tow rail that I pulled off of Athena about a million years ago. I priced one of these out and it was gonna be somewhere right around 5,000 US dollars to replace all of it. And that's just, well, that's a big chunk of money. As you can see, the old one is pretty badly corroded, which that does happen when you combine aluminum and stainless. The new tow rail is all stainless, so we're not gonna have those same corrosion issues. If we damage the new tow rail, it's gonna be super easy to just replace a section or say some of the wood rots over the years. We can just replace that small piece of wood. That's gonna be super easy. Water will drain more easily off of the deck with the new tow rail. Like I mentioned, it's cheaper and I also think it looks cooler. I also really like how the arch is integrated into the tow rail. The tow rail is how the arch is attached to the boat, so it's all gonna look very neat, I think. On both sides of the arch, there's gonna be one of these, an antenna for long-range cellular connections. They're gonna be mounted on a plate, something like this well below the solar panels up here. I'm very excited to try these antennas. They are made right here in Denmark. It's not very often you find a product that's made in Denmark anymore. Like I said, there are two of these, one for each side of the arch, and then there's this guy, which is slightly longer. The slightly longer guy here is for long range Wi-Fi, but there is one problem, and that's the fact that he needs to be at least 60 centimeters from the other antennas, which means the only place I can really mount him is here, kind of in the middle of the arch. The current plan is to build an arm out underneath these solar panels that this guy will attach to in such a way that we can put him down if we're not using him and then just put him back up again if we want to use him. That way, if we need to make sure that we don't have any shade on the solar panels, we can just put the antenna down. You guys have seen the dry fit of the arch on the boat. Now, if you have a suggestion for where I can mount this that's not quite as cumbersome as my suggestion, well, I would love to hear it. So go ahead and leave a comment down below. For the rest of today, I think my time is best spent just sticking into the oh glorious polishing. You guys have already seen plenty of that. So instead, let's fast forward until tomorrow. That little bit of fast forwarding means we're now ready to install the cells or, well, almost ready. I haven't done the initial top balancing on these cells yet, and that requires them to be wired in parallel. So all of the negatives on the same side and all of the positives on the same side. But the thing is, after I've done that top balancing to get the voltage up to 24, I need to wire them in series, which means flipping some of the cells. I'd still like to get the cells moved into the battery compartment today. That way they're out of the way and I can easily lift up a couple of the cells and flip them. I'm just not gonna do the full compression and final installation of them today. Once I move these cells into the battery compartment, I think it's gonna be difficult to see how exactly this is put together. So for the sake of the camera, let's do a little bit of a dry fit 
here on the kitchen island. Once the cells are compressed between the two plates using these six eight millimeter threaded rods, the cells are not going to be moving anywhere. But just as a little bit of a belt and suspenders precaution, I am slipping a bit of fuel hose onto the threaded rods. That way, if we ever get any kind of slight movement of the cells, there's not going to be an issue with chafe on the threaded rods. The cells shouldn't move, but just in case, you know, and this is a fairly nice and snug fit. So I think this is going to work out really, really well. For me to be able to assemble this in the battery compartment, it needs to go in in a specific order. The forward plate here needs to go in first. I've got a couple of vent holes on the front of the battery compartment that I'm hoping I'll be able to use to tighten the bolts that's going to secure the front plate. This guy gets a little dab of Loctite and then the great fishing expedition of 2021 begins. Well, that first guy was pretty easy. So now there's just the inboard one left. That is probably going to be the trickiest one. Note to future self, next time leave just a little bit more room. That would make life a lot easier. With the front plate firmly secured to the boat, I can go ahead and add the bottom two of the compression doohickeys. And again, I will add just a dab of Loctite. There is a lot of energy stored in these cells, so it would be really good if I did not short them out, but uh, I'll just be careful. I'm gonna have to make a slight modification to this plate back here because it's sitting up on some tabbing there. The holes for the threaded rods don't quite line up. So I'm gonna have to enlarge those just a tiny bit. But other than that, I am happy with this. The most important thing is that the holes down here line up, which they do, so that's good. I've torn the boat apart, but I can't find the last of the bus bars for the cells. So I've ordered some more. Hopefully those will get here next week so we can uh, continue with the top balancing process. There's plenty of stuff that didn't make it into this week's video. For instance, the chain for the anchor showed up, 100 meters of 10 millimeter galvanized chain. Also the running rigging for the stay sail showed up. I'm just missing one last little piece of the puzzle and then we'll have a fully functional stay sail. We also did some testing up at the workshop comparing CIGS solar panels to traditional solar panels. One of the of supposed big upsides to the CIGS panels is that they're less prone to issues if you've got a little bit of shadow on one of the panels. And we did see that in the test. I'm just still trying to figure out if the CIGS panels are worth the extra cost and also the extra trouble of having to build some kind of roof type setup for the solar arch because these panels are flexible panels. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, get back to that in a later video. I've got plenty of exciting things on my to-do list for next week. If the weather turns out nice, we can continue work up on the deck, installing the windlass, the tracks, getting the stay sail all rigged up, stuff like that. If the weather's horrible, well, then there's the head we continue working on. There's of course more polishing and working on the arch, stuff like that. So yeah, next week should be a lot of fun. I hope to see all of you guys back here at Athena for yet more DIY fun. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below and don't forget if you've enjoyed this video remember to leave a like see you